We start off with our protagonist Kashiwaji waking up from a dream where he is running after a girl but suddenly falls down an endless put. He wakes up to his alarm which is quite high tech, giving us the illusion that the world he is in is set in the near future. He walks down to the living room and starts watching TV. He finds that there's a new segment in the morning programs and watches it. On the program, a psychic mentions his birthday and starts talking about lucky words or perhaps auspicious words for those who are born on October 8th. She mentions the words corner, train, staircase, cleaning robot, dog, and letter are places where he would have lucky encounters. Soon this would make sense as he rushes off to school hoping to make it in time before the train leaves. While running towards the station, he comes across a corner and suddenly crashes onto a girl wearing specs. They fall in a rather peculiar position as his face lay between her thighs. She gets shy, apologizes and gets up from the floor and they go their paths, but Kashiwaji notices that she's dropped something. Kashiwaji makes it to the train station in time and is surprised to find that he's the only one on the train only to be joined by a green-haired girl with, well, we could say very juicy melons. She sits right next to him and starts falling asleep and her head lay on his shoulder. Uncomfortably, Kashiwaji tries to get away from the situation but ends getting his hands on the melons as the train suddenly comes to a halt. The lady who was half asleep gets the wrong idea and tries to kick him, but Kashiwaji narrowly escapes this encounter as he makes his way down the staircase. Just when things seem to be fine, we find a yellow-haired girl coming down the staircase and jumps making cat to face contact on our boy Kashiwaji. Now, an average man would definitely get a boner here, but Kashiwaji gets a boner in the form of a banana holder, who knew that existed. But of course, the girl didn't find see that and gave him a nice hit on the place and ran off. Kashiwaji somehow finds himself in a park where he thinks he narrowly escapes a cleaning robot only to find that minutes later another cleaning robot would come straight at him, and this time it's not just barehanded. It comes holding a followed by a pink-haired girl running after it. Curious, Kashiwaji picks up the and this gives the notion that he had hacked the cleaning bot and made it to steal girl's wear. Kashiwaji tries to explain to the girl that it wasn't his doing and is only saved by the fact that the cleaning robot pulls her away from him. While walking through the park, it comes across a girl in danger, and as for danger, I mean she was being abused by a dog. Yes, you heard that right, a dog. Kashiwaji remembers that this was one of the other words which the psychic mentioned and tries to slide off from the spot, but instead gets put down by the dog and called a meanie by the girl as he blacks out. He's woken up by some little girls and he realizes he's late for school as he runs to class. A class to his surprise, he finds that all the girls he had met were his classmates and one of them was his teacher itself. The girls are introduced by the teacher, the specs girl being Awen, the red-haired girl who he met at the park being Amelia, the dog rape victim Ilya Zinitsu, sorry I mean the yellow-haired girl from the staircase being Curran, and the green-haired lady from the train who's also his teacher Miss Mungfa. Kashiwaji is staring away from the teacher during this whole time, but is forced to look at her as everyone makes a fuss about it. Once the furls notice who it is, he gets a slop happen from them. Later onwards in Jinroom, Kashiwaji makes a new friend Yoshio, who is stoked about Kashiwaji's morning experience. Apparently, Yoshio is pretty good at stalking as he knows quite a lot about each of the girls individually. Back at the girls' changing room, the girls are talking about him and that's when Oi realizes she has dropped something. Kashiwaji finds a letter in his locker and it tells him to meet at the big old tree near their school after school. He then starts walking towards class and Aoi almost runs into him and collides but this time they avoid it. And she's about to ask him about the thing she dropped when Kashiwaji casually pulls out a from his pocket, but this one being Amelia's one. Out of shyness, he receives another slap from Aoi and he begins to think she hates him now. He makes it to the vending machine and sees that Karen's also there. They both have missed out on the banana supply and this prompts Kashiwaji to give his banana smirk smirk, which was of course in his banana container. He explains that it was the banana container she had seen in the morning and nothing else. She eats his banana and thanks him. God, this sounds so wrong. To make up for not having his banana, he goes to the vending machine in the park and gets a banana soda. As he waits, Ilya suddenly comes rushing to him as she is being chased by the dogs again. She hides behind him and asks him to save her, but this ends up in him getting his pants down as he wrestles the dog. He finds out that he is bitten and walks to the first aid room. On the way, he finds Miss Mongfa who tells him that she will help with it, and while she addresses his woo tells him that she understands the morning incident clearly was a misunderstanding. To his surprise, Amelia shows up in the first aid, cause her melons were chafing, and he takes this chance to give her the b and she apologizes for misunderstanding his intentions. After school, he goes near the tree and is surprised to find Elwe there. He's about to give the to her when she suddenly confesses that she's in love and that she likes him. The air flies in the wind, or should I say love is in the air. Well, not for Kashiwaji, who finds this really awkward and tries to change the topic by bringing up how she's not wearing wear. 
Kashiwaji tells her that he respects her preferences and this prompts Aoi to get shy and run away again. As he's walking back home, he runs into Ilya the girl who identifies as a guy. She asks him to sit down with her and she confesses same as Aoi. Kashiwaji is flabbergasted as she explains her heart skips a beat when she sees him. They both are interrupted by their teacher who drags Kashiwaji away and takes him into an alley. As a way of putting Stalker off, Mongfa starts f***ing Kashiwaji's neck. She explains that someone's trying to woo her and that she had no other way to get them off the back. And as you might have figured, she also confesses her love for her. Kashiwaji explains that they are teacher and student and that it's wrong, but she ignores that and asks him if he likes her. Shocked by this, Kashiwaji runs off only to find Karen, who is all set up in wedding attire to tie the knot ASAP. She tells her that she's the most famous model nowadays and Kashiwaji notices all the boards around and realizes she is right. She goes on to explain how she's dressed up for their wedding and in the rush she's in she already plans for Love Hotel. Kashiwaji plays a 200 IO move and tricks Karen to escape her by asking her to close her eyes and she waits expecting for a kiss. Meanwhile, Kashiwaji runs. Back while he's walking across the park, a girl wearing a mark is looking for signatures and convinces Kashiwaji to sign it. He soon notices that it's actually a marriage form and figures out that the masked girl is none other than Amelia. He thinks he finally got away from the girls, but to his surprise, he finds all the girls at his home. They welcome him and Kashiwaji being the Chad, he closes the door on them. Eventually, Kashiwaji goes in and finds that his talking Aiba has a message for him from his dad. The message is by his father. It reads that he has picked five potential brides for him and that they would be living with him for some time and that he should either pick one or pick neither. He further explains that he doesn't want him, him to limit his romance just as he explains why Ilya was put there as well. He puts one rules to him saying babies and Kashiwaji being the Chad, he is tells them all to leave by the end of the recording. They explain that they don't have any place to go if he kicks them out and that they had all been staying at a hotel till now. He tells them that there's not enough room for all of them at his place as there's only three rooms. The girls tell him that there's five room and Kashiwagi surprise a whole new extension has been done at his house in the time that he had been at school. Now his house had six rooms. She tries to explain to them that it's not right for a guy to live with five girls, but they tell them that since they might potentially be his bride that it's fine. Without any excuses to send them, Kashiwagi out of his kindness allows them to stay at his place as they have no place to go other than this. Later that day, they make him food and he's surprised by how well the food. The food was prepared by Aoi but all the girls argue with each other and they end up saying they all made it. While he's eating, they all try to feed him. This pisses him off and he goes on to have some tea when both Aoi and Ilya come and try to feed him again. Annoy Kashiwaj goes off to take a shower only to find Karen trying to come in with him. He throws her out and thinks he's all good when he finds Amelia in his bathtub spying on him. Enraged, he goes up to his room thinking he would have privacy there only to find Miss Monfa on his ceiling. Yes, you heard that right. On his ceiling like Spider-Man. This was the breaking point for Kashiwaji as he explains to them that he is done with them annoying him and that they should leave. But they tell him that they have nowhere to go so he decides to leave. He leaves off looking for a place to spend the night and winds up in a shrine. Awa somehow finds him there and she apologizes on everyone's behalf. She explains to him about how she had no idea how Kashiwagi would be like just a month before and explains how she felt about him. This prompts Kashiwagi to come home. As he comes in, everyone about to leave, but he tells them that they don't have to leave and that they could stay there. From this point onwards begins their wacky life together. It's the 22nd of April and we find Kashiwagi waking up to Amelia, who's well under his bed sheet in a peculiar position I would say. He takes the bed sheet aside to find that Amelia is using his foot to try and sign the marriage contract. It's morning and Aoi is preparing omelets for everyone. She takes careful consideration to write each of their names on the omelet with sauce. It is then revealed that every night one of the girls somehow sneak into Kashiwaji's room. Well, everyone except Aoi is about to ask why when they are disturbed by Mongfa, who asks them whether her tablet is charged. Oa being the motherly figure, she says she has it charged. Right after that, Amelia comes from the shower looking for a b Oi tells her that they might be dry by now and she asks her whether she could help her prepare breakfast once she's dressed. Ilya, who comes down the stairs, says she will help but is followed by Amelia, who runs up to get dressed so she can help her, obviously to impress Kashiwaji. She comes down and tries to prepare the egg only to spell Kashiwaji's name on her egg. Back at school, we find Amelia a bit off by the amount of ketchup she had in the morning. They are called to the board to do kanji, but Amelia ends up writing murky white liquid which ends in secondhand embarrassment. In the interval, the girls are looking for Kashiwanji who has escaped from the women and is talking about his situationship with Yoshio, who happens to provide his end of advice. 
They talk about Amelia and a flashback comes on reminding him of something that happened back at home They are playing some games and Amelia keeps on losing this prompts her to be determined to not lose Amelia even at dinner is training to win the game which is rock paper scissor by the way She works day and night to win and says that she found a foolproof way to win all the time and that they would have to wait and see Anyway, she ends up losing as usual and this time she even loses a bet where she has to give each of them pudding Kashiwaji notices that his lunch has his favorite food and is confused as he had never told Oi about his favorites before He comes home and has dinner and is surprised to find Amelia missing Karen tells him that she had gone to her room as soon as she had her dinner Out of worry, Kashiwaji goes to check on her and hears her talking lustful scenarios which gets him weirded out He walks in and finds that she's trying to practice her kanji but well, with books that is She tells him that she wants to be good at his language too which prompts him to take her to the library the next day and teach her In short, she was quite affected by the books she read So Kashiwaji makes her write more, but it's still bad So he starts what he calls special training and teaches At night, he notices that she's working really late as well and the next day in school, she's still practicing for her kanji exam Kashiwaji and her are studying in the library together when he tells her that maybe he should take a break But Amelia says she can keep going and Kashiwaji tells her she doesn't have to push herself so much she tells him that she wants to also learn his language and runs off upset Back at home, everyone's worried about her as she's locked herself in her room Kashiwaji walks in and she asks her to leave her alone She thinks she's an a** because she always acts all tough with him Kashiwaji tells her that she shouldn't be sad and that he accepts all her effort He gives her an analog that he had prepared for her to help her get well with Kanji Meanwhile, the other girls are peeping from the door wondering what he's doing taking so long when Kashiwaji finally notices them the next day, every item in the house has a kanji sticker attached to it, and this helps Amelia do better in the test as she scores 70 marks in the exam She believes she's well short of her best, and that there's more work that needs to be done As a way of thanking Kashiwagi, she sends a note with his lunch and also writes his name in kanji on the omelet Ilya, the guy has a flashback Ilya is reminded of her past where her father fed forced her to become a guy and all because he needed a son, and not a dater she has this thought while taking a dump, and that's when Kashiwaji opens the door, finds the washroom occupied, and leaves The next day, they all are shopping at a mall Kashiwaji and his harem all attempt a lucky draw where the first prize gives two tickets to a hot spring vacation Somehow, all of them end up winning first prize, and they all get to go to the hot spring vacation They all arrive at the hot spring inn, and the girls are all excited as they think there will be a very beautiful proprietress But to their surprise, a tall, manly-looking proprietress Kind of questionable if it's a she considering his face and voice, but who are we to judge? The man I mean lady tells them that there's only three rooms and Kashiwaji insists that he will stay with Ilya as she's a guy They both go to the same room and Ilya is a bit shy so Kashiwaji asks her why She slashy, I'm sorry, ik what the pronouns should be, tells him that she snores loudly and talks in her sleep In reply to this Kashiwaji slaps her ass and tells that it's completely fine with him Everyone has made their way to the table tennis court, and they are playing when Karen challenges Mongfa to show her full skill She suddenly hits the ball hard and starts destroying everything in its path, including Kashiwaji's balls Funny enough, the table tennis ball rips off Karen's dress and completely exposes her I guess we could say Mongfa really knows how to play with balls real well It's dinner time and everyone's stuffed Amelia breaks the silence and asks Kashiwaji if he would be allowed to eat sushi off a naked lady as it is a mainstay of hot spring inns the proprietress speaks up and tells her that they can't offer sushi, but that they can offer a tengu platter He explains that it's lived around here for generations and that it one day had appeared at the hot springs and told the ancestors to look after the place A tengu is a mythical creature in mythical Japan and is often portrayed by a mask and that's when everyone understands why there's so many tengu masks around The gang is about to get in the hot tubs as Ilya has quite the chris at hand Kashiwaji being an idiot still doesn't get that Ilya isn't a biological male so she has to think smart on how to make it believable She sees the Tenga mask and gets an idea as to what she should do Meanwhile, the girls are having a talk on who has the better melons Personally, I would Okay, we sidetracked a bit there now Back to the boys' hot spring, we find Ilya coming out in a towel and we get to see that she's used the Tenga mask in a very creative way Back at the girls' side, Karen and Amelia are trying to eavesdrop on what's happening Meanwhile, Ilya and Kashiwagi have got into the sauna and Ilya is already finding it hard to stay as the heat increases as the heat increases further, Kashiwaji can't take it anymore and dips in the pool Meanwhile, the Tenga mask starts glowing and Kashiwaji thinks he's a man among men as he can generate his own heat to keep him fine from the heat After she walks out, the wind blows her towel out and the towel lands on a rock In a desperate attempt to hide the fact she isn't a boy when Kashiwaji shows up, 
She puts on the Tenga mask and pretends to be the Tengu. The girls who were peeping from the other side panic as well after seeing this, and in the chaos that follows, Ilya slips, and while she slips, her Tenga mask trick is revealed to Kashiwaji. She wakes up after being knocked out to Kashiwaji's worried face. She apologizes to him, and before she could, so does Kashiwaji, as he tells her that he's sorry for not understanding she was a girl and for the stuff he did. She tells him that it's her fault for pretending to be one in the first place. She explains to him how it was her father's dying wish for her to be a boy, and that was why she pretended to be one. Kashiwaji tells her that she should carry on her life the way she prefers it, and asks her whether she likes to be a boy or a girl, to which she says that she prefers being a girl like the rest of the girls. She then thanks Kashiwagi for helping her find her true self. The next day, everyone is talking about the Tenga sighting, only Kashiwagi knows the real story behind it, so he laughs about it. Funny enough, the real Tengu is overlooking this whole incident play out. From that day onwards, Ilya is back to being a girl and addresses herself as Arena. Back at school, Yoshi is a bit sour about how Kashiwagi has so many women, and they all talk about how popular Miss Mongfa is among both the boys and the girls. Back at home, Mongfa is a bit drunk after she has had some shots, and this leads to her telling everyone that she loves them. Kashiwaji puts her in bed, and is about to go to bed when he finds that there's someone under his bed sheet. At first he thinks it's one of the girls, but as he pulls off the blanket, he realizes it's a well-built man who instantly gets up and tells him to come with him. He wakes up all of a sudden in what seems to be a highly secure prison all tied up in what looks to be a dominatrix outfit. Mongfa arrives and saves him and it was revealed that he had been captured in order to lure her in. She hands him a fighter and tells him to defend himself. We find that Mongfa is actually a really good fighter and with the use of a fighter, Kashiwaji too is a good fighter. They find that there's a power outage in the facility so they can't use the lift. Mongfa is further revealed to be a super spy as she locates the power source with a bionic eye. They get to the main power station through a window and fix the power only to be approached by the man from earlier. He says that he's been expecting Monfa, whose code name is Bloody Tiger. Monfa and the man start one to one -ing. During the fight, the man starts talking about her past. He explains how she was one of the best agents out there and shut down many underground operations during the time she served. She left so much blood in her wake that they started calling her the Bloody Tiger. He says that his team, the West Coast Lightning Task Force, was wiped out from her, but as a way of taking revenge on her, he had risen up from nothing. As a way of making Monfa go all out, the man threatens to kill Kashiwagi, but she gets beat up. She only pretends to be beat up as she had planted a booby trap earlier and it only needed Kashiwagi to hit a switch to save them both. Monfa apologizes, saying it's her fault for Kashiwagi being dragged to this. She remorses in what she had done during her days as an agent. She explains that she left her line of work and started working as a teacher, and it made a huge difference for her. She tells him that that's all over today as she suits up. Monfa absolutely annihilates the foot soldiers and try to make it to the emergency elevator. Kashiwaji asks her if she would come as well when she tells him to go alone. Although he resists at first, she somehow sends him away. As she makes it out of the building, we find the man from earlier suited up in what looks like a cheap ripoff of the Terminator. He overpowers her and is about to finish her off when Kashiwaji makes a surprise appearance and tells him that he won't let him lay a hand on her. In what was like a David and Goliath fight, Kashiwaji outsmarts him by dousing him with lotion and using a taser on him. This malfunctions his suit and allows Monfa to land the final blow on him. Monfa asks him why he hadn't gone like she asked and he says he couldn't go home without her and that it doesn't matter what she did in the past. She hugs the Kashiwaji in a favorable position I would say. They come back home and Karen finds Asahi sleeping on Monfa, obviously tired from the night before. It sure doesn't look like that though. It's the next day, and while Kashiwaji is shopping, he spots a magical girl. A superhero who seemingly destroys a robot with what she calls pulse. Interesting indeed. At school, Yoshio and Kashiwaji are talking when Karen suddenly shows up and asks him to do the deed with her. He's startled at first and Karen adds further that it wasn't fair that he did it with Monfa and not her, so that she should do it with her as well. They are disturbed as Karen walks up to the window startled by something. A giant spaceship is seen outside, staring straight at the school over the skyline of the city. The news tells that it has appeared all around the world and that it's suspected to be of extraterrestrial origin. Suddenly, a robot appears and it scans through X-ray vision for boys It suddenly fires a ray which makes a band around the area. Kashiwaji is saved by Monfa, but Yoshio was not so lucky as he loses his balls and the gun at the same time as the contraption explodes. Monfa asks them to take cover, and Kashiwaji, who notices Karen is missing, goes looking for her. He finds Karen in the roof of the school, and he finds out that she's the magical girl that he had seen the night before. She asks her to touch her melons, and Kashiwaji, although confused, has to comply as they are in danger. 
He is pushed by a magical creature who seems to be the source of Karen's power. As he squeezes them, power surges through Karen, and this allows her to power up and throw a viagral ray at the giant spaceship, but it makes no dent. Karen runs out of power, and they have to retreat for the time being. Back at the safety of the school, Kashiwaji asks her what all of this is about, and she explains how one day when she was shooting a photo shoot, she had come across this magical creature, who refers to itself as Sagami Okamoto Deluxe, or Sod for short. Sod explains that he is from a world known as the Contrasect Dimension, and that the giant robots outside are monsters from his dimension called the Ball Takers or the BT. He explains that their main goal is to make every male on the planet lose the ability to reproduce by stealing their balls and crotch, and that when the timer runs to 69 on the giant mothership, everyone on Earth will be ball-less. They come outside and Sod reveals a special type of van that's made to power up Curran. He says that her TDL power has to be increased in order for her to receive the power, and that it can only be done inside the van. The two go into the van and Kashiwadi sat clueless about what the sprite said until Karen starts down. She tells him that in order for her to increase her power, they have to do the deed. Kashiwaji tells her that there may be other ways and they try alternative methods, but it doesn't seem to make a change. Kashiwaji tells her that she's not really in love with him, to which she asks him if wanting to do the deed with him isn't love, clearly showing that she has no idea what love is. Kashiwaji explains to her and that he cares about all the girls, including her, and that he doesn't want her to lose her V-card like this, and that she should save it for someone who she really loves. He tells her that she will distract the robots and runs off. Mere minutes later, he is about to be shot by the BT when Karen awakens her pure love form. With this power, she annihilates the mothership BT and ends the alien invasion. By the end, she realizes she's really in love with him. Meanwhile, a secret meeting is taking place including a woman called Mrs. Yoshino. We see a flashback of Kashiwadi with his dad's friend's daughter looking at the stars by the ocean. She tells him that she wishes it will be like this always. The next morning, everyone wakes up and they find out that it's the day they are going Yoshio's father's private beach. Everyone's up and ready for the beach, and they are waiting for the car when Yoshio gets hit by it. So everyone except Yoshio end up going to the beach house. They enjoy the beach for a while doing games with each other, and then they realize that it's a beach, meaning they can let loose of their swimsuits. Everyone lets go of their swimsuits, meaning Asahi has to hide his eyes from the sights, so he puts on some blind sunglasses. After a day of blind torture for Kashiwagi as he has played around like a toy, they go back to the beach house. To Kashiwagi's surprise, all the girls are missing. He looks for them in the beach house, but they are nowhere to be seen. Oi tells him that she hasn't seen them either, but she doesn't show much concern. While Elway is cooking, Yoshio calls a few times, but Aoi hangs up the call, and in the end, she breaks her phone. While they eat, Aoi acts a bit weird, and they walk off towards what seems to be a forest. A cherry blossom tree is there, and Oi confesses her love again. She tells him to only love her and forget about the others, but Kashiwaji is concerned as Oa tries to force herself onto him. Suddenly, the cherry blossoms from the tree wind up around them, and the girl from the flashback, eyes revealed. She suddenly runs off as a dome and circles Kashiwaji, with hexagons reading error signs. Kashiwaji wakes up the next day and sees that the house is empty, so he thinks that everyone has gone to school early. He walks to school and everything seems rather odd, as he steps in on his classroom and none of the girls are there. Another guy is sitting on his seat, and this confuses him a whole lot. He runs around looking for answers as to where the others have gone to as he knocks onto a girl who mentions to her friend that Kashiwagi had been absent at school for ages. He goes over to the cherry blossom tree, but instead finds a lush green tree. He is approached by the women shown earlier, Mrs. Yoshino. She tells him that everyone is at her facility and takes him there. There she does some tests on him and makes him remember that he was actually a test subject for one of her experiments and that he had been in a VR world all this time. She further explains that the girls were all highly advanced AI. Kashiwaji refuses to believe this, so she explains how she had made it possible for I to develop human emotion, and that he had enrolled as a test subject willingly. She further explains that she had been monitoring him as Yoshio all this time, and when Yoshio had crashed in the simulation, it lead to a force quit from the VR. There, Shino gets fired by her chief, as she gives him attitude, and it's revealed the name of the project in which Kashiwagi was involved was Project Petrushka. On their way out of the facility, Yoshino and her colleague believe that out of all the applicants, Kashiwagi is special as she has a theory that the AI had selected him. They go outside and Yoshino explains that all the AI in the world right now was developed by one doctor who was able to make the AI copy the data of a human's mind. It's revealed that the AI is based on the mind of Kashiwagi's childhood friend who had died due to a sudden illness. Finding out all of this leaves Kashiwaji in shambles as he breaks down. This explains all the flashbacks the AI girls had of the childhood version of Kashiwaji. They were memories of the girl AI. 
Kashiwaji wakes up and finds that there's been a network disruption and a lot of things have stopped working because of that. Yashino arrives at his house as he had ignored her messages. Yoshino tells her that there might be a way for Kashiwaji to go back into the AI world. She explains that AOA had malfunctioned and has gone rampant, and that the existing network disruption is because she messed with the first quantum computer in the world, Muse IV. Suddenly, the AI bot Loverin chimes in and produces a hologram of the girls. Everyone except Aoi. They all ask Kashiwaji to save Aoi as she is not herself at the moment and had never asked for help when she needed it. Everyone recalls how they couldn't notice the way she was struggling, till it was too late. Suddenly, the hologram gets cut off as there's a large network disruption and all the electronic items in the world have stopped. Yashino tells Kashiwaji that only he could save them as he only has the power to convince Aoi to stop running rampant. Although he is hesitant at first and initially rejects the idea, he makes up his mind to help her and they both go to the late Dr. Aizawa, A's father's lab. Their Kashiwaji is booted back into the Ai world. And this is after Yoshino understands why Aoi has now functioned. It's because she has fallen in love with Kashiwaji. Kashiwaji is spawned in the AI world get alongside Loverin, his robot assistant A under the control of Yoshino. They find that there's a firewall blocking access, but with the help of a butterfly, they open up the firewall and enter the AI world. Their Yoshio's avatar breaks through Loverin's body as Yoshino tells it's more comfy for her that way. They both are in as they are suddenly attacked by the dogs and the cleaner bots who have become hostile, probably due to the influence of the network disruption. They dive into a pond and suddenly teleport into the room where they get some slaps for being He is then greeted by all the girls who had missed him deeply. Yashino switches bodies again and this time comes in the form of Sod. They all sit down and explain that this whole conundrum has occurred due to Eloi falling in love with Kashiwavi, but I'm not wanting to see him. Yashino explains that there's an eraser program out there looking to delete all the AI and Kashiwaji promises them that he wouldn't let that happen. They all realize that Ewa is in the center of the AI world, but is protected by protection. Saad tells them that there might be a secret path to her devised by Ewa herself and they teleport there. Kashiwaji remembers that it's the place from where he was held captive. They go through and find that there's many foot soldiers, suddenly all the girls have hidden power-ups as they all battle it out. Kashiwaji, in an attempt to protect Yoshino from a blast, falls off into another room. The gang regroups and is about to go further when they come across the Eraser program. They somehow make it past the Eraser program and are about to escape after good beating the Colonel Thunders by Miss Monfa. When the Eraser program messes up their plan, Monfa decides to sacrifice herself and tells Kashiwaji that she knows that she is an artificial being but her love for him is real. She kisses him one last time and tells him to keep moving forward. After pushing Kashiwaji into safety, she battles till she's put down by the Eraser program. Everyone is devastated by the loss of Monfa, but have to keep on moving. They move on through the secret path, followed by more attacks from the Eraser program, eventually injuring Kashiwaji a bit. While they tend to his wounds, they ask him about how the real world is like and how school is like there. He tells them that he hadn't been to school in a couple of months since the passing of A. They move on further and are lost when the same butterflies who had guided Kashiwaji earlier shows him a path which is invisible to the naked eye. They go in there and come onto another area of the world, where everything seems a bit trippy. They notice that there's a swarm of bots waiting to attack them. So Karen and Irina convince Kashiwaji to let them distract the attackers while Amelia guides him to Aoi. Although hesitant at first, he is convinced by everyone to go on. On the way, Amelia tells Kashiwaji that when he had taught her kanji, she was reminded of past memory when Kashiwaji had done something similar. Obviously being one of A's memories, she shows him how his support for her had made her fall in love with him and she thanks him for that. Things are looking good for Karen and Irina as they reminiscence the way they each had fallen in love with Kashiwaji. They both send their final message to Kashiwaji and sacrifice themselves so he could go forwards. Amelia also sacrifices herself as they all thank him for showing them love and helping them find out who they are. With one last kiss, Amelia sends Kashiwaji down another door and smiles to him one final time as she sacrifices herself too. Kashiwaji, although completely devastated, has to move on and meets Aoi. He asks her where Ai is and she tells him that she's in her heart and he pulls his head into her breast. It's spring and Ai and Kashiwaji go shopping. Ai comes short on her allowance and isn't able to get the necklace she wanted so Kashiwaji buys it for her. Suddenly, she gets a shock of sort. Kashiwaji asks her if she's okay and she tells him it's fine. Little did he know she wasn't fine as she had a brain tumor, which made her a terminal patient. According to the doctor, she wouldn't make it to next spring. A's father breaks down, but I tells him that she will keep fighting. I hides her illness from Kashiwaji all throughout and makes him promise to see the cherry blossoms bloom the next spring with her. 
As her days are coming to a close, she realizes she can't stand it without Kashiwagi and tries to contact him to come, but it's too late. Back from the flashback, Kashiwagi is staring at a door while Aoi stands behind him. She tells him that Ai is behind that door and that she's grateful for showing her what true love feels like. Kashiwaji tells her that he's grateful for them as well and enters the door. Behind the door, he finds Ai, under the cherry blossom tree. They hug and Ai tells Kashiwaji that he has to forget her and move on. He tells her that he can never forget her as they grew up together, and that even if he did try to buy volunteering for the AI program, it only led him back to her. He confesses to her how he had always loved her since they were kids and Ai shares these feelings. They grieve about how they couldn't spend every second together, but in the end, Ai ends up going to rest happily. In tandem with this, the world's network disruption also is fixed. Kashiwaji returns home from college and is surprised to see there's four packages for him. Suddenly, Mongfa, Amelia Less Than Karen, and Irina jump out of the box in their new robotic bodies and tell him that they will live with him from now on. They explain that this was the work of Miss Yoshino. Oi, on the other hand, decides to walk over to Kashiwaji's house on foot as a symbol of her affection and ring the doorbell, as the story comes to an end with a happily ever after.